Hi, my name is Sebastian Matteau and in this very short series of videos I would like to show you the basics of running an experiment online with a tool called OS Web. Now what is OS Web? It's a, a browser implementation or an online runtime of Open Sesame and Open Sesame is a free tool for building psychology and neuroscience experiments. So in this, I'm not going to show you the basics of how Open Sesame works, for that there are other tutorials available, but I will dive right into the things that are specific to running Open Sesame experiments online. So in the first video, I will show you very briefly, so this video, I will show you very briefly how you can include JavaScript, basic JavaScript, in your experiment, because JavaScript is the language of the web. Then in the second video, the next one, I will show how you can actually upload your experiment to a server called the YATL server that you need to distribute links to your participants. And then in the third and the final video, I will show how you can download your data that you have collected from the YATL server and convert it from a kind of clunky format in which it is stored uh, to a format that you're used to, a CSV or an XLSX uh, file that you can use for uh, further data analysis. Okay, so without further ado, let's get started. All right, so here on the left-hand side, we have Google Chrome, the browser that I'm going to use for running the experiments. And on the right-hand side, we have Open Sesame. Um, and in Open Sesame, I have opened a very simple lexical decision experiment. So let's run it. How do you run the experiment in a browser? Well, let's first actually check whether we can run this experiment in the browser. So I click on Tools, OS Web, and there I will get some kind of uh, uh, some configuration panel, if you will, for OS Web. And it will say compatibility check, no problems detected. It also gives you the version. Right now I'm running version 1.3.5.0. Um, and it's kind of important to make sure that you're running the latest version of OS Web because currently we're updating it a lot. We're working on it a lot. And there are new bug fixes quite often. So if you run into some issues, make sure that you're running the latest version. So, but it says no problems detected, meaning that we can run this in a browser. How do you run it in a browser? Well, that's this button, run in a browser, the little green sort of cir filled circle with the play thing. And if I click on that, it will actually not pop up a new window as it would normally for an experiment. I'm assuming that you're familiar with Open Sesame here, um, but it will actually open the experiment in the browser here on the left-hand side. And you will see, and that's important to note, that it's actually opening the experiment. It's running in a browser, but it's still all happening on my own computer. There is no internet connectivity happening here. It is just a local file on my computer that is opened in the browser. OS Web 1.3.5, an opening thing. Click with the mouse to begin, and then I get some instructions. And so what is a lexical decision task? Well, you get, I'll just walk you through it. You get a word or a non-word, and you have to press a button to indicate whether it's a word or a non-word as fast as possible. And here it says, if the letters are a word, press M. If the letters do not a form a word, press Z. So let's, let's do a few trials just for, for, for demonstration. Not a word, we'll tell. Mocha, not a word. Magic is a word. So it becomes green if I'm not a word, if I'm correct. If I make a mistake, it becomes red. Right? So you see that um, there, is, there is interactivity here. You can get feedback, the experiment responds to what you do, etc. You can get average response times, accuracy, etc. Okay, so in principle, this is a good experiment. But what I want to show you is how you um, can use JavaScript to make your experiment more flexible and also what the limitations are. So you probably know that Open Sesame normally use, uses Python as its programming language, but in the web, uh, in a web browser, Python doesn't really run, right? The web browser is based on another programming language called JavaScript. So if you want to include scripting in your experiment in OS Web, you also have to use JavaScript, and that is a little bit tricky. So what I want to do now is have kind of a very simple, show you a very simple but um, realistic use case of using JavaScript namely using JavaScript to uh, implement counterbalancing in this experiment. So here you saw that the words, that, that the, I, I had to respond to words always by pressing the M and to the non-words by pressing the Z. But it makes some kind of sense to counterbalance that response rule so that for half the participants it is like that and for the other half the participants they actually press Z to respond to the words and M to the non-words. So how can we do that? We can do that in a number of ways. We don't actually need JavaScript for that, but I'm going to implement it with JavaScript just to show you. So um, here we have our experiment. There is no JavaScript in there. If I want to add JavaScript, I use this item. Under OS Web, there's the inline JavaScript item. It looks similar to the inline script item, which is based on Python, but then as the name suggests, it's actually using JavaScript. So I pick this up and I drag it to the top of my experiment. 
Um, and then it is called new inline JavaScript, and I will rename it to counterbalance. And you see that just like a Python inline script, which again, I'm assuming you're familiar with, you have a prepare phase and a run phase. The prepare phase is sort of run in preparation for the actual action, the run phase in when the, you know, your trial or your sequence is actually executed. So implementing counterbalancing is definitely a preparatory thing, right? Because we're really, um, we're, we're, we're going to do something that we're going to make use of, uh, that use of later. It is not something that happens as part of the, of the trial sequence or anything like that. It's part of the preparation of the experiment. So what can we do in JavaScript? So what are the limitations of JavaScript in OS Web? Essentially, the only thing that you can do is uh, manipulate experimental variables, which are properties of the varse object. So you might be used to, in, when you're running Python inline script, you're probably used to uh, creating canvas objects, keyboards objects, and basically doing all kinds of things in a script, implementing forms, etc. In JavaScript, currently in OS Web, you cannot, but you can interact with the varse object to set experimental variables. And then you can use those experimental variables later in your experiment to manipulate, for example, what is shown on a sketchpad, etc. Or in this case, what the response mapping is. So note that limitation. Essentially, the only thing you can do right now is manipulate experimental variables through the VARS object. And it goes like this. So I say if, and then VARS dot subject parity equals, 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 which is the JavaScript way of asking whether they're the same, is even, up, then vars. I'll just type it and then I'll explain it. Vars dot, uh, word response is z and vars dot non-word response is n. So the word response and the non-word response were already defined actually in the global script of the experiment, but here I am overwriting them based on the subject parity, and the subject parity is determined automatically based on the subject number. So if the subject number is even, subject parity will be even. If the subject number is uneven, it will be uh, old. And not uneven, actually, the word old. Else, okay, I will just copy this. Up. Oh. Else, the response mapping is the other way around. Okay, so here you see, this is very simple, right? But there are a few things that you need to be aware of. Uh, first, the vars object has an S at the end, whereas in the Python inline script, it is just var. Why is that? Well, that's because var was already a keyword in JavaScript, so we had to use a different name. Um, you have to make sure that you're actually using syntactically valid JavaScript, of course. And you cannot do, as I already mentioned a few times, you cannot do much more than this. You cannot not do much more than setting experimental variables like this. But this does work and it's already very powerful. So let's see if this actually works. How can we do that? So um, let's go to back to tools to OS web. And here you see possible subjects numbers, 0, 1. This means that for every participant, um, uh, uh, the, the subject number is randomly sampled from 0 and 1. That makes some kind of sense, right? If you want to counterbalance, you want to sort of randomize that. But for testing, let's see if we set the subject number always to 0 then we know that actually the subject parity is even, so then, and then we should have the even rule. What is the even rule? The even rule is so the word response is Z and the non-word response is N. So let's see if that actually works. I click here, the experiment reloads in the browser, up, and it says, if the letters form a word, press Z, if the letters do not form a word, press N. Okay, that makes sense. Let's go back, tools, OS web. Now let's set the possible subject numbers only to one. And if we run the experiment now, up. okay, run it. If the letters form a word, press M. If the letters do not form a word, press Z. Okay, that works. Now, in then, of course, when you're going to distribute the experiment to your participants, which I will show in the next video, you want to set it back to 0, n, right? 0, 1, so that actually the subject number is randomly sampled for every participant. But I hope I've now shown you how you can use some basic Java inline script in OS Web to, add, to not do that much but it will add a lot of flexibility to your online experience. Thank you very much for your attention.